Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury channel. I'm doing paid review 20JU58. Quick, quick, quick wristwatch check and we're in a paddock filly. 5127, Calatrava, white gold, just a gorgeous piece. Okay, 20JU58, this is for Misha. Hi Arch, big time fan, proud Patreon supporter. I send you 50 US to your PayPal account. Uh, as I would like your assistance in helping me choose my next piece. But first, I would like you to review my collection thus far. Okay, number one, we've got a Baum and Mercer Capeland Chronograph. Okay, great. I know the brand is soft as dog doodah. However, this was my first proper watch, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. As good looking as the Valjou Chronographs I've seen, I've also purchased it new at an absolute bargain price of 1300 bucks. Number two, Ingenua, Ingenua, IW322703. The Ingenua is criminally underappreciated in this day and age. And this particular model is among the last of the Ingies before they shrunk them down to 40 mil, <clears throat> made them frumpy and threw in Salita movements, acquired this watch from my father in a partial trade and purchase. Then he's got a Pam base logo, Pam 000. You insist Pam is a soft brand, but these two hand manual wine Pams command prices well above what I would expect such a simple watch would sell for. There is an entire cottage industry devoted to making straps for Pam, which is a hobby unto itself. However, I love this watch, and since it was a thoughtful gift from my father, it's a very important. It's very important to me. I've attached photographs of the watch on my wrist because. I'm a big guy, pushing two meters tall and almost as wide. Wow. I wear a 44 mil watch like certain rodents wear 33 mil quartz royal oaks. At this time, I intend to sell my Copeland chronograph and purchase a watch in the 6,000 range. I wanted to know your thoughts about the options I am considering. He's considering a few options. He's considering a, let's go through this list here. Number one is a Rolex Explorer 2 Polar, the 167, actually it's a 16570, he's got the number wrong. Of course, this would be the top of the list. I'm partial to the Polar, as I don't think the red GMT hand looks good on the black dial. I think it's also an obvious choice anyhow. I'm concerned this would be a bit small on me. I also love the 42 mil 21, oh okay, 216, it's 570 which looks great in black, but is definitely out of the price range. Okay, number two, Rolex Milgauss, double one, six, four, zero, zero. I'm not interested in the green crystal, and this could pair beautifully with the Inji or make it redundant. Looking at prices, this might be one of the better value ones out there, and I am not picky about the color. Number three, Rolex Air King, double one, six, nine, zero, zero. I've always wanted a watch with about 15, uh, number fives on the dial. This is Rolex's wackiest watch. I think it would suit me wonderfully. It's basically a Milgauss with a crazier dial and a much lower price. If I go this route, I will pick it from the AD as there are no discounts on the grey market. Number four, Pam Base, Pam 372. I know I should be tired and fevered for paying this much respect to a two handed Pam, but I absolutely adore this. 47 mil. Plexiglass sandwich, perfect two-piece feed when compared, when paired with my 44 mil sausage style Pam 000. And number five, man on the moon. Maybe it's too early to get in, it's too early to get into Rolex. Maybe it's a bad time to get into Rolex. Maybe I'm not ready for Rolex. I figured if I purchased the man on the moon, I could keep my Cape Lennon and save a nice chrono combo, hunger meal buster. Hopefully I'm not uh blathering on too much i am not really interested in any of the brightling super ocean or tudor models unless you demand i buy a blue pelagos please let me know what you think of my current collection and which one of the above i should purchase okay so let's have a look here very interesting guy thank you misha firstly number one the Bowman mercer chronograph what do i think of it i gotta be totally honest with you it's actually not a bad looking watch However, it is toxic. Nobody wants Borman Mercer. My brother is an accountant and uh, he wears a Borman Mercer Classimo, Classimo, which I I don't understand why he um, he, he kind of did that. But uh, yeah, it's it is kind of weird. But um, 
hey, I I, uh, I kind of get a lot of weird vibes from my brother there. He's just not into luxury watches. He likes luxury push bikes. So um, I got to be honest with you, it's it's the way to go there so he's he he wears a capelin and i gotta be honest with you it's really not um my cup of tea borman mercer soft 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 that is a if ever there was a toxic brand it's the Baum and mercy uh yes that is a look i think to be totally honest with you you've bought it it's not a terrible watch i would never recommend one it's not a terrible watch. It's not a great watch. <coughs> I think for the thirteen hundred bucks you've paid, what are you going to get for it second hand? So you're going to take a really big bath. No one really wants that garbage. It's going to be hard to sell. I think you're better off to keep it because it is reasonable, and you've got it already. I don't know how easy you could sell this thing. If you can clear it and get your money back, get out of it. But I think that's probably unlikely. Your Pam, 3227, yes sirree, this is a beautiful, sorry, your IWC, 3227, I had the same one, we're talking the big size where it had the in-house movement, I agree man, that is an absolute beautiful watch, the problem with IWC is, the Ingenua was sort of, that was IWC's science watch, it was their answer, it was kind of their version of the Rolex Milgauss. And what the unfortunate thing is, is that IWC has been really lost. See, they rebranded the Ingenua nameplate as a sports chronograph watch. So <coughs> they've, they've confused the mix. They've really confused it. So <coughs> those Ingenuas, they are amazing, you know, bang per buck because... People are confused as to what the hell it is supposed to... I'm just grabbing a water. I drink water. I drink a lot of water now. And um, i got to be honest with you. I understand that completely. People are confused. So IWC, man, they got fantastic boutiques. I love them. You know, I really love the look of them. No one damn well wants them. So I think you keep your IWC. Now your PAM 000, the base logo 000. Look, that is a great, easy to sell watch. The PAM 111, PAM 112. They are classic, iconic PAMs. I don't hate them. Don't hate them. Don't hate them at all. They're, they're, it's, I, I don't know. I would not be buying a second one. Come on, man. One is enough. Okay, please. Now to answer your question there. At this time, I intend to sell the, the Capelin Chrono. How are you going to sell it? What are you going to get for a thousand US? See, I think you're better off to keep the damn thing. Keep the Baum and Mercia. Keep the IWC. Keep the Pam. That's that's what I do. I don't know if you could easily get out of that thing. That's the big problem I've got. Okay, what do you buy? I tell you what. Okay, what would I buy if I were you? Every man needs a Rolex. You need a Rolex. Every man needs a Rolex unless you've got a Patek Philippe. you got a Patek Philippe, you don't need Rolex. But if you don't have a Patek Philippe, you need Rolex. So <clears throat> we go through this list here. So that automatically means the man on the moon, get the Rolex first. The Pam 372, ditch that. Get the Rolex first. Now, out of those Rolexes you've mentioned, what would I get? I tell you what I would do. I seriously would say, first Rolex, I would say, no hand, no date. So let's cross the Explorer 2 off. I think it's a little bit rattlesnakey with the bracelets, a little bit small at 40 mil if you're a really big guy. Personally, <clears throat> Milgauss, yes, Milgauss, <coughs> or Air King. Or Explorer 1, 39 mil. That's what I would say. 39 mil, Explorer 1. I definitely, I've owned, actually, would you believe this? I actually traded a Milgauss, an Air King, and a Explore, 39 mil Explorer 1 
for one Patek Philippe. I traded it for my 5296, so that just goes to show you. What would I pick? What would I pick? Look, I reckon any of those three is good. I would probably be looking at the grey market. I don't think you're going to get that from a dealer. Dealers are very short on supply. Okay, maybe COVID times you can get one. Okay, if you get one, pull the trigger, get it. But any of those, a Milgauss, doesn't matter what color, even the white, I reckon the white one is the underdog because it's going to go very popular in the future. Uh, the Air King itself, I love it. I owned one. I really did love it. I love the, it's got the Explorer 369 plus the the, 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 the further indices plus the, the, the coronet and, and the, the green writing. What a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So... I'd definitely say that, but I'd also say Explorer 1. Which one do you go for? It doesn't matter. They're all fantastic. I'd just, whatever's a good deal at the time. Every man does need a Rolex. You must have a Rolex. Unless you have a Patek, then you don't need the Rolex. But that's that's exactly what I do. It's not a bad collection. No point selling the um, the Borman Mercy. You're not, it's going to be a hard sell. No one damn well wants it. Just, just, just keep the damn thing. So that's that's my advice. Okay, so there you go. That's 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 my opinion there, guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. I think Misha's got a reasonable start. Nice little start there. I really do think the IWC and the Pam are good. You need a Rolex. You must have a Rolex. Don't, don't even don't even consider anything else. You've got to have a one Rolex. Every serious watch person has a Rolex. So definitely get one. Guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some negative comments. Guys, don't forget, Archie, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I really do need paid reviews to keep me in the saddle. This is what keeps me here making the vids. Paid reviews, 50 US dollars. I'll review your collection. I'll give you some advice. I'll tell you what's good. I'll tell you what's bad. I'll give you honest advice. I'm Paul Pluto. Tell me what you guys... Think of that. Hi guys, Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Guys, the wristwatch market is terrible. It is absolutely shite. Okay, guys, I'm offering the Jager LaCoultre Reverso Grand Sun Moon. We're going to ship it internationally. How much do we want? $9,250 US dollars. $9,250 US dollars shipped to the developed world. No sales to Africa, Indonesia, and third-rate countries. But guys, we're ready to ship to America, 9,250. I've tried to get an Aussie punter on. The Aussies seem to be very, very tough to sell a Jager Le Coultre to. Come on, guys, 9,250. 9,250, come and grab it now. Email me at luxury 72 at gmail.com. luxury 72 at gmail.com. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, new sponsor on the channel, App Stanchi 8. Help get the most of your engineering and DevOps with App Stanchi 8. App Stanchi 8 provides on demand DevOps infrastructure, test automation, and continuous integration as a service with a focus on mentoring and hiring assistance to help engineering teams scale. They are experts in Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, and the latest open source utilities to help your company save time and money. Cost reduction in your hosting bills alone will pay for itself. 
In addition, the team is 100% unsure. New York City based senior engineers. Abstantiate will help you get most productivity out of your current stack and or employee headcount. Email hello at abstantiate.com. Please email now hello at abstantiate.com for more information. Archie Luxury, proudly supporting fantastic businesses. And don't forget, guys, make sure you subscribe to the Archie Luxury Corporate Live Streaming Channel to be updated on all the live shows I do. Live shows! Yeah.